Good morning and welcome back to another Saturday Psalm Things with Mats. Hi, I'm Mats and today we are all about Italy. And these are beautiful, beautiful wines for Easter as well, soon coming up. Before I go on with the show, just to let you know that Cami Schaefer, she's our wedding planner and party planner. She will be outside of Argonaut today from three until five. So come down with all your party planning needs, wedding needs, meet her out front of Argonaut. She'll take care of you. So today I have a returning guest. His name is Ben Stewart. He works with Juliana Imports. And last time I had him at the table, we were discussing winter warmers. So today it's all about Italy. Ben, welcome back. Thanks, Mots. Good to be here. Yeah, today we've got some wines from uh, GD Vira, one of my very favorite producers in the Barolo region of Piedmont, Italy. Um, I think these wines are perfect for springtime, perfect for sure. Easter. They're they're bright, fresh reds. They've got a lot of structure. They're great with food. And we also here have a really fun little white wine, which is not typical for the area, mm -hmm. but as one would probably expect for a region that produces almost entirely red wine, wow. the locals are going to want something fresh and bright and easy drinking right. for, for the warmer months. I like it. Yeah. So this is the Longue Bianco, uh, the Dragon Longue Bianco, uh, under the Luigi Baudana label. This is a label which GD Vira has been making for some years now. He took over a local cellar, and uh, this is a wine that was already being made there in this very small cellar, um, completely organic uh, winemaking here. And uh, this is a uh, blend, actually, a very typical blend for the region. Um, I'm this thinking is, the Chardonnay in it. Yep, there's a good bit of Chardonnay in there. There's a little bit of uh, Nazchetta. So it's 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 a it's a predominantly a blend of Chardonnay and Nazchetta, okay. which is a local. Uh, uh, native variety right. in the region. So while it is predominantly Chardonnay, mm. uh, you know, it's not your typical cougar juice. Uh, <laughs> we've got a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc as well. And yes, interesting we <laughs> Riesling as well, which is a grape variety that Aldo Vira, uh, the predecessor of Giuseppe, who's now the winemaker, introduced to the region. And I'm not getting any oak. No oak, okay. all done in stainless steel. Mm -hmm. This is a really fresh and crisp, springy white. I get lemon verbena, peach blossoms, little Mandarin. It's beautiful. It's, yeah. It's growing on me. Zesty. You definitely get some orchard fruit. You get sure. your, your apples and pears in there. Definitely some Anjou pear yeah. with a nice softness. But then that Riesling has just the like, slightest nudge. We're only talking sure. about 5%. Right. So don't be afraid if you're not a big Riesling drinker. Definitely something that uh, just adds a little zip on the back end with a little bit of acidity. And what's nice about these Italian wines, they're very highly classified. They're all DOCs. The last one, the Barolo, being a DOCG. So in Italy, that means a lot. Yes. And the quality is showing beautifully. On to number two. So the Longue Nebbiolo, this is a wine which is uh, the most important grape variety of Piedmont, right. Nebbiolo. This is what Barolo is made from, which we'll taste last. Um, however, uh, it, they also love to make these very fresh versions. This one is done in, almost entirely in stainless steel. I like Small it. amount in, in large cask. So you don't get much uh, oak treatment here. This is a very fresh, easy drinking red. Right. Something a little bit on the lighter side. If you're a Pinot Noir drinker, this is something that I think you would really enjoy. However, the color is deceptive because I'm getting a nice mouthfeel. I'm mm. getting big, rich, a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. So it's not typically light like a Pinot. Mm -hmm. It's just beautifully full-bodied. Th that is something elegant. that I notice a lot and something that right. I have to point out to folks who are tasting Nebbiolo maybe for the first time, mm -hmm. especially if you're a, lo a big cab drinker or something like that. Right. The, 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 the color is deceptively light. You could read through this. Sure. However, when you, uh, when you taste it on the, on the palate, you have so much uh, more complexity, richness, and tannin. Yes. Um, that, you know, this is something that works really well with food as well as on its own. Bing cherries, fresh raspberries, wild strawberries. I'm getting it all. Mm -hmm. And nice acidity, too. Right. So yeah. it's still very fresh. Definitely. I think these are food wines. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So on to number three. Number three. Now, now this is a Barbera, and this Barbera is grown completely within the commune of Barolo, which is really exciting. Uh, three different vineyard sites all blended together. 
This one actually does spend about 12 months in large Slavonian oak casks. Okay. Uh, so you definitely have a little bit more weight here, definitely more structure and tannin. Mm -hmm. So this is not just oh, yes. sort of like a frivolous, shy Barbera. It's got a lot of complexity to it. You can see the color is like the deepest Deep, of right, all three right. of these. Absolutely. Um, and this is definitely a, a Bisteca Fiorentina mm -hmm. wine, a food wine, uh, see, veal shank, see, veal see. chops. Uh, something that you can really sink your teeth into, only to be complimented by this beautiful Barbera. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that this is something that I love equally with pizza, pasta, a lamb ragu okay. with something like sure. this, bolognese. These wines are sort of perfect for any sort of hearty pasta dishes. Mm -hmm. Anything with mushrooms in it, perhaps. Okay. Nebbiolo especially. I, I mean, when I think of Nebbiolo, I always think of, you know, truffles. Yeah, earthiness. And so forth, yep, earthiness, anything with I mean, like sort of... The yeah. last three reds, I think, are very rustic in nature, mm -hmm. which calls for something from the forest floor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Should we do the last one? Yeah. The Barolo, the king of wine and the wine of kings. Absolutely, and uh, so we're jumping back to the Nebbiolo grape, which was the first one we tasted. Right, right. Uh, however, here uh, we're spending a minimum of 24 months in cask. Uh, this is a legal requirement prior to release, uh, and then an additional time in bottle prior to release. So 2019 is the current vintage. We are eagerly anticipating the 2020 vintage, which is coming. These are two vintages in a row yes. that are extraordinary. They're age-worthy. However, one of the things that's really remarkable about these previous two vintages, and 2018 as well, if you can find them out there, uh, they are just so delightful right now. Mm -hmm. I'd say out of the three vintages, 2019, which we're tasting today, is perhaps the most classic okay. and most age-worthy out of them. Right. But it's shocking to me, and I think to a lot of us who are tasting Barolos these days, just how how inviting and enjoyable they are right now. Wow, that's a big wine. More tannin, and, oh, and yes. hear that sort of uh, that that uh, dichotomy between uh, the the color and the weight on the palate is is the most striking. I oh, mean, yeah. again, still a beautiful clear ruby color, but on the palate you have structure, you have tannin, you have juiciness and freshness and balance and vigor and finesse, it's all there. It's all in this mm -hmm. little glass. Three and vineyard sites all within the Barolo commune. This is a true Barolo di Barolo. Yep, DOCG, the highest rating that the Italian government can give them. And we're having it now. Miss Sheila has these wines on sale. Mm. And Ben, I can't thank you enough for introducing these Italian wines for Easter, for even every day drinking. Absolutely. Because they're so well made. And yeah, I mean, even this Barolo is an extraordinary value. And so tasty. Yeah. And I appreciate you coming back to the table to give us a little tour of Italy. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mons. So thank you, Ben. Thank you. And everybody come on down to Argonaut today, meet Cami, and she'll take care of you. And I'll be tasting these wines today. Saturday at the wine desk from three to four. As always, it's free. Just bring your ID. Ben, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Bella.